Beam down smoke. After a long wait, we are finally back with a brand new episode of Investment Odyssey. So welcome back everybody that's been following the series. And if you're new here, basically the way this works is we're spending $500 total. And then once we spend those $500, we're going to use the investments that we buy with that money and try to make $1,000, meaning we'll make $500 profit overall. So the series is getting pretty interesting. I hope you guys are enjoying it. I'm having a lot of fun making it and I hope that the series goes on for a long time and I hope we're successful in our goal. So we're going to start off with a quick little update because of Shattered Web ending and then we're going to go ahead and move into our new investments for this episode. But before that, let's talk about SkinBay. SkinBay is a very good site with a very easy to use user interface. And of course, it has great prices all across the board. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check out SkinBay, I do have a link you can use in the description below. It does support the channel. And if you do decide to buy anything with my link, be sure to go ahead and let me know. And I'll let you know what I think about your purchases. So thank you guys for checking out SkinBay and let's get into this episode. So of course, with Shutter Web ending, there is a lot of things happening in the aftermarket that we have to talk about. About, but one of the main things is the gold web foils of course those are something that we did decide to invest in for investment odyssey prior to the operation ending so after the operation ended gold web foils spiked up to around five dollars and 34 cents at their peak and they're now back down to around four dollars and 50 cents because of the people selling for profit and of course mixed with a few of those panic sellers and that's actually something i want to talk about is those panic sellers so panic sellers of course have been bringing prices down pretty much across the board but i will tell you do not fall for this this is something that happens all the time in csgo and in other marketplaces of course as well and panic selling is basically only occurring because there were a lot of people that were invested into shattered web simply for making extremely short-term hype profit which did occur a little bit but maybe not as much as some people were actually determined to make so that's why there's a lot of panic selling happening i will tell you that if you go ahead and sell right now you're probably going to regret it in the future if i'm being honest so maybe be a little bit more patient with it and you'll see some nice profit. That's of course what I'm doing at least. So if you do want to sell now and you don't really believe me on that, then well, just keep watching the channel and you'll see what happens. Another major point is that those Shadow Rug cases have now officially been discontinued. They are put into the rare drop pool. So obviously you can still obtain them. It's just going to be really rare. And that supply that's going to be provided via the rare drop pool is not going to be significant enough to drive the price down. It is still a little bit odd that CSGO has decided to discontinue this case considering that there is a brand new set of knives in them that have not had any sort of other release. They're only available in the Shadow Rub cases. So I'm a little confused as to why they did that. They also, of course, released that Prisma 2 case, but it did not feature the new knives. So again, very, very weird. And we're going to have to go ahead and see what happens in the future with that because I do think they're going to have to release the knives in some form in the future. But it's a little bit weird that they didn't, you know, actually fully keep the case and just decided to discontinue it. However, of course, one interesting thing that came out of this really odd scenario for Valve is that the Shadow Rub cases are now very hard to obtain, and they are going to be a lot more rare of a drop, just like the Hydra case. So we could see some Hydra case prices in the future if they don't decide to release the same skins or the same knife in any form in the future. Which is actually why I decided to start off this Investment Odyssey episode buying 10 of these Shadow Rub cases because they were officially discontinued and we do officially have that information. Shadow Rub cases did not spike up that much, and I was able to buy 10 of them right now for about seven dollars so we saved about three dollars because we bought on a third party site of course as for the shadow rub cases in terms of my gold price i'm hoping to sell these at around three dollars by the end of this year and if that doesn't happen i'll hold on to them for a little bit longer of course but i do think that the three dollar price range by the end of this year is still pretty realistic if not even a little bit higher i do think that the shadow rub case does have a lot of good skins in it and of course it has exclusive knives that you can only get in the shadow rub case as of right now so i think the three dollar price range is actually going to be pretty realistic so we'll see how that goes and if it does of course do well, then I'll be pretty happy with that. Now, the next thing that I decided to invest in for this episode was going to be concerning our friend, the M4A4. So if you don't already know, the M4A4 did not get a release in the Prisma 2 case, and it also did not get a release in pretty much any form throughout the entirety of the last operation. We did, of course, get the M4A4 Dark Blossom, but that doesn't really hold up to the regular standards of the weapon itself. So I went ahead and decided to really get onto these M4A4s because the skins for them are clearly not being provided in the greatest form. So the first thing I bought here for the M4A4 was, of course, the M4A4 Modern Hunter. This is one of the oldest M4A4 skins and also one of the rarest ones. No, I did not get a factory new one. Those ones are a pretty high price at the moment. And also the mineral wear ones were also proportionately a pretty high price. So I went ahead and decided to just go safely with a field tested one. I went ahead and got a decently low float on it. Not too bad, not too high, of course. 
and I think that it looks decent even though the M4A4 Modern Hunter is a skin that gets scratched very easily. Regardless, I think it's a pretty good price to pay for this. It's pretty cheap, of course, but I think overall it's going to make us a good amount of money. But I didn't really want to stop at just the M4A4 Modern Hunter. I think the M4A4, of course, not getting a new skin in the Prisma 2 case as well, obviously deserves it a little bit more of attention for this investing series, and so I went ahead and decided to also pick up an M4A4 Daybreak. Now, the Daybreak is actually not just a good investment because it's just an M4A4, it's also a good investment because it's a pretty rare operation skin that is, you know, a little bit hard to get your hands on these days, and of course, it looks very good in game. It does have a very good overall design. It's from the Chop Shop collection, if you're wondering, and I went ahead and got one in factory new condition. I bought it on buff for about 334 yuan which is going to make us a little bit of profit off the Steam market because it's worth about $60 in the Steam market. Obviously, that's just how cash price works, and it's not actually direct profit, but we did save money on it. Now, another thing that I was looking at buying for this series was a Desert Eagle Crimson Web. Now, the reason for this is because the Crimson Web is only getting rarer. It's obviously one of those very high-tiered Eagle skins that a lot of people have been interested in over the years, and I was able to find a really good price on a .15 Desert Eagle Crimson Web, so we were able to pick one of those up as well, and I'm pretty happy with that purchase. I think Desert Eagle Crimson Web is going to be a pretty solid investment. Maybe not immediately because it's one of those rare older skins that not a whole ton of players know of, but of course being able to get it in .15 float condition is going to make it a lot easier to sell the item when we do decide to do so. But I didn't want to cut our adventure short there. I do want to go ahead and buy a couple more of those Gold Web Foils because they are pretty cheap right now. They actually equalize back at around their normalized price, which is pretty good for buying at the moment, and I think that these are going to be a good one to hold on to as the year progresses. So I went ahead and purchase two more of these to add to the collection and so now we have a total of six gold web foils so overall i think these are some pretty good investments to make right now we went ahead and put a bit of money into those m4a4s which i think are going to be a very solid investment going forward we also got them at pretty good prices those day breaks actually go for a pretty good discount on third party sites which is pretty nice because we do get to save a lot of money on those of course as for the desert eagle crimson web i do think that the crimson web is going to be an interesting deal to invest in i think it's one of those ones where i kind of just wanted to invest in it for a while and I just kind of decided to do so now and I think it's going to be good to have at least one of those in our inventory going forward. And as for some of those consumables from the Shutter Web collection, we of course got a lot of those cases, 10 of them at the moment, and we also were able to get two more of those Gold Web foils, which I think are also both going to be solid investments going forward as they are consumables, and they're going to be harder for people to latch onto and keep the price normalized. So overall, this is what our investment spreadsheet looks like at the moment with everything added, and this is what our storage unit looks like with all of the investments included. At the moment, I'm not really looking to sell anything off. right. Now I'm just going to go ahead and keep holding on to these as we continue to make more episodes and seeing where the Shutter Ribbit investments specifically take me, and then we'll decide when we want to sell for those. Anyway guys, it's going to close out today's episode. I really hope that you guys are making good profits with the Shutter Web collection, and I hope that there is some good profit in the future for this collection specifically as well. I also hope that you guys are not getting too paranoid with these panic sellers. I know it can be a little bit frustrating to see a lot of these people selling at lower prices, but I assure you all you have to do is wait and you can make some good money on it. Half of investing is just patience. And with that, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, be sure to leave a like below. And of course, consider subscribing to the channel for more content like this in the future. And turn on notifications if you are interested in getting the latest and greatest investment tips before anybody else on YouTube. And of course, be sure to check out the Twitter and Discord links in the description below as well. We can help you guys with your investment questions if you just go ahead and ask using one of those links below. And with that, I really thank you guys for taking time out of your day to come spend it with me and this video. I wish you guys all great profits, and I will see you all next time. Peace.